Hey everybody, I got a big old mug of clunk, 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 clunk here today, but not really. It's not what we're going to make. This is a piece of apple. Um, it's got some problems, but I think, I think it's going to be okay once we get into it. I don't think these are going to go all the way through. So uh, what I think I want to try to do with this is to make kind of a uh, calabash bowl, which you guys know seems to be my favorite thing to make. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut this here and this here. So I cut this little thing off. Um, and then I'm going to put the spur drive here and mount it like this. So it's going to be basically a bowl from a log and you'll have the pits on the sides. I've had this kicking around the shop for quite a while and, um, I'm just kind of been waiting to take the time to do something with it. So today is that day. Let us let us do that. One moment, please. We'll use a wood worm screw, I think is what it's called. I could be making that up again because I say it wrong so frequently I don't even know what the right thing is anymore. If it's a warm wood screw or a wood worm screw. Is it going to be one of those kinds of days here? Because I'd rather it didn't be that. I think I'm going to have enough room on that branch I cut off where these jaws will sit flat-ish. If I can make them twist like that, I think we'll be all right. Okay. And I'm always going to have the tailstock up, so... Now... Whatever. That's just going to be how that is. I waxed my bed ways and I took this apart, cleaned it, waxed it. Okay. All right. Let's see what kind of a mess we can make here. Now you eagle eyes are going to notice that I had initially set this up to be mounted on a spur drive. I changed my mind and just drilled a hole for the worm wood screw, wood worm screw, anyway, whatever that thing is, because I, I just don't have a real good way to seat the piece up against the spur drive. I'm still having trouble with my Laguna Live Center as far as it not wanting to eject if I have to put any pressure on it. I had the alignment a little bit better when I had it between centers, it's off maybe, I don't know if it's even an inch, but um, it's off enough that it changed the axis a little bit, which isn't a huge deal. I'm going to end up having to take off an awful lot more than I was anticipating just because the this blank is not as symmetrical as I was thinking that it might be. And so, as is common in wood turning, you start out with a pretty good sized blank and you end up with a very small piece.
first of all, make sure that my tenon is the right size. Um, one of the, one of the viewers, his name is T Rob. He sent me a file that I cut out on my, one of my laser engravers of a tenon sizing jig. And I gave him the dimensions and he just laid it out for me because he'd already had the thing kind of done. And then I did printed it and used it and I've got the dimensions all screwed up. I don't understand how I can do calculus and I can like not measure things, but that's another story altogether. So for now, what we're going to do is take this off of here, make sure that this fits before we get too far down the line here, maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I need a bigger hammer. That's great. I guess it wasn't going to come off, but you know what? Let's put gloves on. Let's put another glove on and see if we can make this undo. Undo! <clears throat> Come on. Mm. Don't you love it when it's like the stupid stuff that doesn't work right? <clears throat> ah! Let me give it one more try with just my bare hands. <sighs> Not feeling particularly strong and beefy today either. That doesn't. Oh, there we go. Help. Oh, shoof. Now I got a stinger in that arm. Hey, man, this getting old stuff sucks. I do not care for it. I mean, I guess it's better than the alternative, but geez. All right. Now, let's see if we've screwed it up all the way around and made the tenon too small. Oh, that looks like we might get away with it. Should give this a sharpen and oh boy, I am just so not proficient at uh, sharpening by hand. Not my strong suit, but I'm practicing, so. Uh, well, there are like 13 different bevels and <laughs> uh, yay, yay. someday I will do that better, but this is not that day either. Okay, so we're all locked on. We're ready to go here. Well, my sharpening job didn't look very pretty, but that sure cut a nice, a nice smooth cut on this kind of dry, dry.
I've got the lathe running in reverse right here and I have a set screw that holds the chuck on so that you can do it this way. Otherwise, if you put the lathe in reverse, you're likely to unscrew the chuck as you're going. So if you have a lathe that has a reverse function, make sure you have a chuck that has a grub screw that holds it onto the spindle. And we're back to running in forward here, just to be clear. The cracks that are in this were actually pretty small and they were small enough that I didn't think I was going to be able to get the Milliput in it. So I enlarged them with the Dremel and now I'm mixing up the Milliput, which is a two part epoxy and you have to take equal parts of both colors and mix them until they're uniform and then it hardens. So I let it sit overnight. All right, back. And it does not look like any of these cracks are still moving. Where I put the pencil marks is definitely not past that. At least I don't think that one is. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and start sanding this. Um, probably in one of my upcoming Tool Time Tuesday videos. I'm going to introduce you guys to my sanding supply company. I've been using them for since about 2007. Anyway, I've been kind of bugging them to, to set up an affiliate program so I can get you guys some discount codes because their products are fantastic. They carry, um, they carry things like Merca, but they also have their own line of sanding stuff. And it's astonishing to me. The difference in quality in sandpaper and i think part of it is you know you don't really think about sandpaper as being a tool but it it really is you know we joke about the 80 grit gouge which we're going to be working with here because there's some tear out but um you know when i first started turning i bought some real cheap sanding discs from amazon and they're terrible they get dull so fast it's it's just ridiculous and the ones that i get from two sand are really good uh, so I want you guys to to check that out. I have a bit of a headache today, so I'm not going to put my trend shield on. I'm going to just wear a respirator. sanded through 400 and then I'm going to do my new normal finishing routine which is denatured alcohol and then a one pound cut of shellac and then Brad's abrasive sanding paste and then Brad's tongue honey. Well there's some there's some pretty bad tear out in here um, but I just don't think there's going to be much I can do about it. I think I might actually paint the inside of this black. I'll put some shellac in it to just to help seal it. I probably use three pound cut inside and then um, paint it black and that will be easier than trying to finish it. And uh, I think actually it'll look kind of cool. Yeah, you know, I've used 
Brad's uh, tongue wax for for a while now, and I and I really like that. That's you know one of my go-to finishes. But boy, the tongue honey, I just love. And this is probably going to be what I use for just about everything. You know, it's easy to apply. It's food safe. It's made in Texas. You know, so we like we like made in the United States things. We like things made by small business people. All right, let us buff. I got the lathe speed running at about 11.50 here. All right, to get the tenon off, I am going to use a jam chuck. This is just a long one that I had made for some bases, and the opening for this is too small to use the one that I normally do. set out to make a spear, but I got to tell you, looking at it now, it's not, it's not far off from being an actual spear. Well, it isn't quite what I had in mind when I started out, but isn't that just how we go? Wood turning is never really quite what you think it's going to be. I was hoping that the top was going to be able to have some bark on it, and, and that didn't. Oops, I'm, where am I? Over here. And that didn't, that didn't work out for me. I'm not super crazy about the millipot that I put in there, but, you know, it's all right. I don't hate it. And we'll just see how the cracks hold up. I like the shape, because you know how I like my little calabash guys, right? Um, so I, I do like the shape of it. I wish that this had been a little bit more obvious. You know, I ended up taking the bark out of there, too. I think I would have lost it, but 
I wish that it were a little bit more apparent that this was a you know a natural defect in it. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. That's what. There's Oscar. He's king of the stink eye. We call him stinky winky. Stinker winker. Hi. What are you doing, handsome kitty boy? <laughs> yeah. You're giving me the stink eye, aren't you? There's baby boo. There's baby boo. Uh, 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 uh. No. Sit. Back up. Wait. <laughs>